Welcome to the Meet Me at the Creek podcast with Pastor James Jeffrey. Meet Me at the Creek is a ministry of Mud Creek Baptist Church in Stevenson, Alabama, where Pastor James shares sermons and covers various topics and talking points. Feeling a bit left out? Don't. Pastor James encourages subscriber participation. Email your questions, ideas, or recommendations to James Jeffrey Jr. at iCloud.com. Thank you for meeting us at the Creek. Now, here's Pastor James. First of all, I'd like to say <clears throat> good morning and uh, thank you to Brother James for giving me the opportunity to uh, give my message, God's message, over podcast. This will be the first time that I've done this, but uh, for the glory of God and the availability and the opportunity that He gives me that I should open my mouth and spread God's Word to His people and to those that haven't accepted Him yet. But uh, this morning I would I'd like to go over something that's going on in the world today that people is scurrying around and it seems like they don't have any hope. There's no foundation. There's no solidity to where they are in life. There's seem like the rug has been pulled out from under us. Even me. Even as Christians, we and sometimes we, we get off track and we we start thinking, woe is me and and even with our families and our jobs and all the different situations and circumstances that's coming our way, but when we look to God's word, he gives us stability. And in that stability is where our faith gets stronger. It's it's where we can where we can live and we can we can put down roots and and enjoy the life that God has given us no matter what's going on around us. Though the mountains be moved is what I think it says over in Isaiah, I will trust in the Lord. No matter what's going on, Jesus came to this earth so that we would have a hope. A hope in Him I think it says over in Thessalonians. Let me go over there. If I can find it right quick. Well, I know it says it over there. For this hope we have. Well, I thought I had it marked. Once more. Right here before Timothy. First Thessalonians and four. And Paul said, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, I know that's talking about our loved ones that's already passed away, and a lot of people wonder where their their family members are. But he's talking to Christians there. But I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So we have a hope in Jesus this morning. <clears throat> we have a solid foundation that we can base our life on. No matter what goes on around us, whether our job goes south, our health goes south, our family goes south, no matter where we are, we have a hope this morning. And I want to speak on that hope for a minute. That hope that I'm talking about is the anchor, the solid foundation we have in Jesus. You can look over in Matthew and it shows you uh, Matthew chapter 7 and, and verse 13 and 14. He shows you the two different ways 
that we have, and he talks about enter in ye the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. And verse 14 says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now, when he says few there be that find it, that means most of this world, most of the people that live on this earth, is not looking to Jesus. They can't find him because they're too tied up in what's going on around them and in their life and what's making, if they was to come to Jesus, how uncomfortable it would be, but they don't realize that Jesus brings peace to your soul. He brings stability. He brings a hope that no matter what, what goes on in our life, we have a hope in Jesus. We know that when we leave, when we take our last breath, it's just the beginning of our lives. That spirit that lives inside of us, that looks outside of these eyeballs, that's, that's living on the inside of this shell that we have, is going to live forever in one place or the other. And they, that's either heaven or hell. And that's the Bible. That's not my opinion. That's what it says. The two ways. That's in verse 13 and 14 of chapter 7 in Matthew. But that's really not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about is the two foundations. The anchor that we have in Jesus. We all need an anchor. We need something to keep us stable today. Let me read a little insert here that I have. It says, In times of great difficulty, we become more focused on things that are dependable. We need something that's going to keep us true, keep us God put us here for a reason. He give He put us here for us to enjoy life, and and to serve Him, and to be a witness for Him. But most of all, to have a relationship with Him. That's why God created us. He said, in times of great difficulty, we become more focused on things that are dependable, things we can be certain of. The author right here is talking about. He says, certainly, such is the case in our present distress as a nation the problems that's going on around us um it's talking about the different political parties and candidates and then in past and recent elections they claimed that they will make things better but as we see things are not getting better and they're not going to get any better it's all in the bible it's all going down because people will not turn he said my people if they will hear my voice and turn from their evil ways i will heal their nation and it's talking about the different political parties in their government here is what what this little insert's talking about but and he said each political candidate they assure us that it, everything is going to be better when i get in office but it says there there's an old phrase that really used to mean something back when man's word was his bond you can go to the bank on it now i don't know why that's been stuck in my head for a while but you can bank on it but you can bank on jesus even though the word bank on it, you look at it today, even the banks are starting to collapse. They're having to buy each other out and, and prop each other up because, because they can't thrive in, our, in the culture that we're in now, in the distress that's going on in our finances and in our communities and, and, and the breakdown of social systems and, and everything that's going on in our world. But I still, I, let me just focus on where we need to be today as Christians and even non-Christians. If you look to Jesus today, you'll have a hope. Uh, he says you can bank on it. It says it was a way of saying to someone, this is a real thing. It's virtually guaranteed. Well, we're a little shaken right now on what we can go to the bank on. It says we may not fully trust the promises of any of our elected officials or, or would-be future candidates, but there is one rock upon which you and I can afford to anchor our lives. That foundation is where I was talking about today. That anchor. 
He says, which you and I can afford to anchor our lives. There is one for which you will never have to be afraid of His being too weak to support you. His name is Jesus today. And He spoke the will of His Father. The Word of God and His Son is their bond. Um, the Father and the Son have spoken words that we need to cling to today. The promises of God, the foundation, the anchor, that solid rock, that bedrock that we need in our lives today to live our lives so that we don't have to scurry around all squirmishing and, and nervous and fidgety and like the rest of the world worried about what's going to happen. We don't have to worry today. Brother James preached on that about even he and me. We all do it. We look at our situations without looking at Christ first. When we see our bad situation, we need to understand that we need to look at Christ right then or we're going to get caught up in the same uncertainty as the world. But it says this, uh, the Son has spoken words that we need to cling to. God and the Son. In John 14, 1-11, it says we have a promise on His dependability. God is true. God will not fail you. Jesus didn't come and, and just go through the actions just so people... He wasn't just a messenger. He was God in the flesh. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. And without the resurrection, it's all in vain. But He got up out of the grave on that third day. Amen? But it says, we have a... We have Jesus' promise on His dependability. He affirms His total dependability by affirming, if it were not so, I would have told you. That's in John 14 and 2. If it were not so, I would have told you. That's saying, hang on, believe me, I've got you right here. Listen to what I'm telling you. If it were not so, I would have told you. Let me go over there for just a second and and read so that it's not just hanging right there with that part of that verse. John and 14. What he's saying there, let me read verse 1 through 3. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's a promise right there. I will come again and receive you. When you die, you can bank on that right there. You can put your faith and your trust and right down to the bedrock, solid foundation. If I go to a prayer place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That's the promises that we need to hang on to God. And what Jesus has said, he says, Jesus will never forget His promises. Notice some other things God and from Christ that we can most certainly depend on from the Father, from the Father God, as well as His Son Jesus. We've got seven different things here. The promises, the foundations, the rewards, the acceptance, the love, the immortality, and the hope. <coughs> First of all, in 1 Kings 8 and 56, it said, Blessed be the Lord that had given us rest unto His people Israel, according to all that He had promised. There had not failed one word of all His good promise, which He promised by the hand of Moses, His servant. Notice that. His assured promise is, there's not failed one word of all His good promises. That's from the beginning to the end. In, in the Bible. And the second one is, the first one was His shared promise. The second one is His shared foundation. What is that foundation? 
Isaiah 28 and 16 says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. That's that anchor we were talking about, that sure foundation. Matthew chapter 7 Verse 24 through 27. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him like to a, a wise man which built his house upon a rock. There's that foundation, that anchor, that solid foundation we need to keep us stable. Stable. Which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it that verse 27 is is talking about the people that think they've got it all figured out and they go through this life and everything's good with them nothing's going wrong they haven't put their trust in christ they trust in what they have their money their statue their who they think they are in this world and they've got it all figured out it says and great was the fall of it the, the, it says the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. There's nothing that's going to stand in this world. It's all coming down one day. You were born naked in this world and naked you're going out. That's what Job said. You're not, you're going to, one of these days you're going to lose everything you have. If you don't have Jesus, you it's going to be you going out of this world by yourself into a, a Christless, without Christ, a godless eternity forever. That's something else that you can actually bank on what God says in His Word. Just as much as His salvation is true, so is the damnation true. You leave this world without Jesus. You're going to wish and you're going to remember every word you've ever said and you're going to remember every chance that somebody offered you or offered to help you, telling you, come to Jesus. Put your money on Him. Bank on Him. Look for Him. But the foundations, we see that. David said, in Psalms 18 and 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my strength in whom I will trust. 1 Samuel 2 and 2 says, Neither is there any rock like our God. Brother James was over in Psalms 61 yesterday. Psalm 61 and verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry out unto thee. And he was talking about being overwhelmed. When my heart is overwhelmed. And he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from thine enemy. Only that solid foundation. Jesus being the rock. He is the rock. 2 Timothy 2 and 13 says, now this is that foundation we're talking about. And I'll get, first we had His promises, then we had His foundation. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. 2 Timothy 2 and 13 says, 
If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, for he cannot deny himself. You can trust in God. God's promises are true. And he's always going to be true. And he's faithful. So let's go back down. What? Let's just look at what a solid foundation is, the anchor. What is an anchor to start with? An anchor is something that secures, it fixes to, fastens so as not to give away, become loose, or to become lost. It holds you right where you're supposed to be. That's the anchor we have in Jesus. God knew He was sending a Son to take away the sins of the world so that people could come to Him for salvation and be anchored and know for sure that they're going to heaven when they die. The, the anchor, back to the anchor again, it's something that is attached. It's free from or not exposed to danger or harm. Safe, dependable. It's firm, not liable to fail, yield, or become displaced. That's the foundation. That's the anchor that we have in Jesus. Something that keeps our soul anchored and secured to Him. Not that we be happy, but we... we have our hope in Him and be assured in Him and we can be glad that God is running our lives and keeping us from going astray. Okay, let's get back to these again, the seven different hopes we have. We have His promises, we have His foundations. Then there is His sure reward in Matthew 10 and 42. It says, Whosoever shall give to drink one of these little ones a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple... Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So we have the promise, the foundation, the reward. And number four is his assured acceptance. And John 6 and 37 says, All that the Father give me shall come to me, and in him that come to me I will in no wise cast out. That's an assured acceptance. If you don't know him today, that verse right there is for you. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. In other words, you can't come to Jesus without the Holy Spirit pulling you. If you have that feeling in your heart and your mind and it's something that's, if you're in church and you're holding on to the back of the pew or the back of the chair and something is drawing you and you want to let go but you don't want to, that's the Spirit of God pulling you. Jesus said that the ones that you had given me, I have lost none. I forget what verse that is. Um, anyway, let's get back to where we were. We had His promises, His foundation, His reward, and His acceptance. All that the Father give me, that's in John 6 and 37. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. In other words, you come to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit has been drawing you, he will in no wise cast you out. He will accept you. And number five is we have His divine love. Romans 8, 38 and 39, He says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's our anchor again. That's the solid foundation. Nothing can separate us. Number six is we have an assured immortality. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1 says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, in other words, if we was to die, burned up, every how we're going to get out of here, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands. Listen, if God does something, it's done right. There's nothing that He does that's not the way that God intended it. It's, it is for sure. It's solid. You can bank on it. I was trying to get the right words out there. So we have His promise, His foundation, His reward, His acceptance, His divine love, His immortality. And then last of all, in Hebrews 6 and 19, number 7, we have this as an assured... Hold on. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. 
That's our hope. That's our foundation. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of our soul. That's, well, I thank God today that he let me get all of that. I, this has been on my heart and I hadn't been able to get it out. But he did this morning. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that he keeps me no matter if I'm drifting or, or swaying or I feel like I'm away from him. I'm not doing what he's supposed to. He still sure. Second Timothy again, 2 and 13. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He puts us back on the right track. He is the anchor that pulls us when the winds and the turbulence and, and the waves are trying to pull us away and into the world and, and out into the stresses of life. He's got that anchor. He did the work. We need an anchor this morning. That was our message. That's, that's what I had to get off my heart today. God wanted me to get it off and it took me a while, but I'm sitting here at home. I've had problems with my knee and I'm out of work again, but thank God that He's let, he, let me get it off my heart and I hope that it helps someone this morning. I hope that somebody can get some help, whether Christian or non-Christian. If you don't know Him, you can know Him today. He says, come to me and I'll give you rest. He says here, we need an anchor. What do we need an anchor for? We need, we need an anchor for our faith. We need an anchor for our marriage. We need an anchor for our home, our life, our thoughts, our jobs. Each and every part of the day, we need an anchor for our church, our actions, our word, our speech. We need an anchor for everything that goes on in our daily lives. As long as we're on this earth, we need that anchor, and that anchor is Jesus this morning. If you don't know Him, you can know Him. He wants to know you. If you go over, if you don't know Him today, you have a Bible. You can go over to Romans chapter 10. They call it going down the Romans road. This is where you can see salvation and the promise. God's promises today. God's promise, verse 10, or chapter 10, Verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That Chapter 10 of Romans, verse 9 through 11 right there. That's the promises of God. That's the solid foundation we have. I've actually had the opportunity to walk through the plan of salvation with a few people, with my two brothers and, and a couple more people, and and watched them give their heart to God and and did what was in the place and being available, like Brother James was talking about being available for God today, like I've tried to be this morning. Being available, even though Satan's going to do everything he can to keep you from being available. Even when you are available, he's going to try to jump in at the last minute to keep you, to keep God's plan, to keep his promises from coming to fruition. But as long as we stay faithful and if we stay anchored to God, to Jesus, the salvation, that we have, the hope we have in Him, then as long as we're in the will of God, we'll not be moved this morning. The Bible says, I shall not be moved. That verse 9 of chapter 10 in Romans, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That verse right there is all you need to get you to heaven. To seal it this morning, to keep you founded, and to give you faith, and to change the outcome of your whole family's life. I remember when Paul and Silas, they were in the prisons and, and the gates busted open. There was an earthquake and the, and the prisoner come out and he said, don't kill me. And they said, well, we're, we're still here. We're still here. We're not going anywhere. He said, sirs, how must I be saved? And he said... 
believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your whole household will be saved. That's what I'm banking on today. That's the bedrock, the foundation. I forget what verses those were in. I think it's in Acts over there somewhere. You and your whole household. That's what got my attention. Well, I thank God today that He let me get through this. And I hope it's been a help to someone. And I thank Brother James for for uh, inviting me to to make a podcast this morning on on some words that the Lord had given me and the message He's given about a solid foundation and us being stable and staying on the right path today. Uh, God bless you and, and if you if you've felt the need to to come to Jesus today and and there's no one to help you, you're alone, all you gotta do is reach out to either me, my name is Dale Baker and or Brother James, or someone, somebody else in the church, and, and we'll walk you through the plan of salvation. If you have read over that, and 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 you and you sought God, and you asked Him to forgive your sins, and share that with someone, please do. We, we need to. You need more literature. You need. We need more growth, and and become a disciple, and and to stand on that rock. That's what the message was about today. Well, may God bless you. And may He get all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for stopping by the creek. Don't forget to tune in to our other show, When He Speaks, hosted by Austin Holcomb. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace.